Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number six. Day 6 and we are on page number 151. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page 151. We're going to start from the very very beginning of the page, the very first problem that you see there, problem number 35. Let's take a look at it. Problem number 35, the very first one. It says, it says that the average of 3, 15, 32, and n plus 1 is 18. Some quantity n plus 1. The question simply is how much is n? How much is n? Let's find out, shall we? So we know the average of these four quantities 3 plus 15 plus 32, and finally the last quantity n plus 1. Their average is 18, which means their sum. Their sum has to be 18 times 4. That is their sum. As you can see there. And we just have to solve for n. That's all it is. So let's find out, shall we? So here we get 3 plus 15 is 18. 18 plus 32. 18 plus 32. 30 plus 20 would be 50. So it's exactly 50 actually. It's exactly 50. So we get 50 plus n plus 1 is equal to 20. 20 times 4, 20 times 4 would have been 80, so it's 8 less than 80 because we don't have 20 fours, we have 18 fours, we have 2 fewer fours, so it's 72. That implies that n plus 1 must be 72 minus 50, which is 22, which means that n is 21. And that's what it is, very simple, very straightforward. There's not much, there's not much to discuss here. Let's go to the next one, shall we? Let's go to the next one. However, however, if you're curious, this is the traditional way. There was a quicker non-traditional way. If, uh, if you like, I can show it to you. This is very traditional, very orthodox, very classical way. Here's the non-traditional way. We, we, have, we have four quantities, 3, 15, 3, 15, 32, and n plus 1. Let's keep it separate here. Okay, stay with me in the story. If they were all 18, if they were all 18, the average would have been 18. If this first quantity was 18, this was 18, this was 18, this was 18, the average would have been 18. This is not 18, it is only 3. It is 15 short, it is 15 less than what it ought to be. This is 3 less than what it ought to be. 32, 32 minus 18, 32 minus 20 would have been 12. It's actually 14 more, 14 more than what it should have been. And this one, it will carry its own weight 18. Let's see what sort of adjustment we're going to do. Okay, stay with me in the story as already said. Negative 15 and positive 14, if you want to take them together, it becomes negative 1. A negative 1 and a negative 3 is negative 4. We have to make up that 4 here. We have to make up that 4 here, which means n plus 1 has to be 22. Voila, right there. n plus 1 has to be 22. If n plus 1 is 22, n must be 21. We don't want to do all this mumbo jumbo of classical way. Let's do 36. In 36 we are told that school is halfway between A and B. A and B's house. A and B's house. So let's do that. Let's put down let's put down A, let's put down B, and put the school halfway right here is the school. This distance is equal to that distance. They're going to say that in the next line, in the next sentence, they tell us that B is in fact halfway. B is B is halfway between the school and C. Where C, as you know, if you have the book in front of you, if you're looking at the book, you know what C is. C is Carlos' house. So uh, between B is between halfway between the school and Carlos. B is right here. 
Why shouldn't I put this line because this is confusing? Okay, school and Carlos. School is right here, and B is right in the middle. B is right in the middle between the B is right in the middle between the school and Carlos, which means Carlos is right here. Which also means that all of these three distances are equal to each other. These three distances are exactly equal. Because S is the midpoint of A and B, and B is the midpoint of S and T. Are you with me? They're going to get, they're going to say they're going to tell us the school the school, what we're calling S, is four miles from Carlos house. Four miles from Carlos house. Right here is school. And this distance we just told is four miles. Well at this at that distance at that distance from Carlos house to school is four miles and from school to to B's house is the same distance as from B to C, then they are all two miles. That's they are all two miles. And finally the question question simply was how far is A's house from Carlos' house? A to C is what they're looking for. A to C is the calculate C is two plus two plus two is six. The answer is D. The answer is D. Let's move on. 37. Thirty-seven is a geometry problem, as you can see there on the next page. No, it's not on the next page. It's at the bottom of the first column. The big picture is given to us that looks something like this. There. Picture looks something like this. And let's first insert. Let's first insert the information that is given to us before we insert our information. So we are told, we are told that this angle right here is 150, 150 degrees. This angle right here is 150 degrees. This angle right here is 150 degrees. And they don't extend this line. It really doesn't matter if they let it extend or not, but it's not there in the picture. And this angle we are told is x degrees. The question simply is how much is x? So let's do it together, shall we? There is nothing, there is nothing to write here. There is nothing to write here. There is nothing to solve here. Just follow me. Follow me through the journey step by step. And we'll arrive, finally we'll arrive at x. So let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. If this is 150, then this angle must be 30. You know, I just opened this thing brand new. This is very annoying. I just opened it, as I said. Brand new and it's not working. Okay, one more time. If this angle is 150, this angle right here must be 30. With me so far? Similarly, if this angle is 150, this angle must be 30. Still with me? If this is 30 and this is 30, then this remaining angle, of course, they all have, they all have to add up to 180 because it's a triangle. If this is 30 and this is 30, that's, that's 60, this angle must be 120. So far so good? If that angle is 120, then this angle right here has to be 60. Because it's a straight line. It's 60. This angle is 60. We are almost there. This angle is 60 and if this angle is 150, this angle inside has to be 30. So this is 30, this is 60, this is 60, this is 30. 30 plus 60 is 90, which means x must be 90 also, because they have to add up to 180. x would have to be 90 x is 90. The answer is D. As I said, there is not much to do there. You just have to follow the step. Number 38. Number 38. It says that we are going at the speed of, somebody is going at the speed of, one mile per minute. Pay attention. It's one mile or a minute, not one mile an hour. We are also told that they are, while they are traveling, while they are driver, driving, they are using the fuel at the rate of at the rate of five gallons every two hours. Five gallons every two hours. And by the time they finished, by the time they finished the journey, we are told that they have used up their burn. Three and three quarter gallons. 
three and three quarter gallons. Are you with me so far? The question simply is, how many miles did they travel? How many miles did they travel? Let's find out, shall we? We need the room so we can have to erase this thing. Set it up as a ratio problem. Set it up as a ratio problem. Gallons over hour. Gallons over hour. And we know that we are burning five gallons in two hours. Five gallons in two hours. And we also know that the actual journey took three and three quarter hour. That goes here. That's the gallon. Three and three quarter hour. If we solve for x here, in this ratio, if we solve for x, it will tell you how many hours this person drove. So let's solve for x. Let's isolate the x. I'm not going to show all the baby steps. You, you figure it out yourself. 5 times x would be 2 times this amount. And then we'll divide this times this amount. 3 and 3 quarter times 2 divided by 5. 3 and 3 quarters times 2 over 5 hours. That's how many hours the person drove. You with me so far? That in turn implies that in turn implies that they must have driven, they must have driven three and three quarter times two over five times sixty minutes. Because there are sixty minutes in an hour. So far so good. That tells you how many minutes they drove. We see sixty on the top, we see it's five at the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by five. We can get rid of this five and sixty will become twelve. Twelve times two, right here is two and there is twelve. Twelve times two is twenty-four. So this boils down to 3 and 3 quarter times 24. 3 and 3 quarter times 24 what? 3 and 3 quarters times 24 minutes. Stay with me, okay? 3 and 3 quarter times 24 minutes, but they're going exactly 1 mile per minute. So however minutes they drove, however minutes they drove, that's however many miles they have driven, which is exactly what we want. The number of miles driven is right here. Right there is our answer. 3 and quarter. 3 and 3 quarter times 24. Let's figure out what that is. We can do it right here. 3 and 3 quarters times 3 and 3 quarters times 24. Should we do it together? Let's do it together. 3 times 24. 3 times 24. Well, I, I don't know what 3 times 24 is, but I do know 3 times 25 is 75. I know that 25 threes or 325 would have been 75. We don't have 25 threes, we have 24 threes. So it's going to be 72. 3 times 24 is 72. Plus 3 quarters times 24. So let's do it right here. 3 quarters times 24. That's the answer. We just have to simplify it. 4 goes into, four goes into 24 6 times. So six, 3 times 6 is 18. So essentially it is 72 plus 18. 72 plus 18 is exactly 90 miles. This person has driven 90 miles. The answer is E. The answer is E. That was number 38. That was number 38. Let's move on to 39, shall we? Number 39. Oh Lord, my neighbor is at it again, he's cutting down some trees and I don't want to stop the video, I want to finish the two problems. So just ignore the noise, okay? In number 39 we are told that somebody bought, we are going to buy two kinds of, we are going to, we're going to buy two kinds of trees, make sure the book, two kinds of doors are, not trees, trees what he's cutting down. We are going to buy two kinds of doors. Make sure the book is in front of you so you can read the entire problem yourself. We are buying two kinds of doors. One door is going to be solid, made out of solid wood, and the other one is going to be hollow. Okay? We are going to buy five hollow doors and six solid doors. Price of the hollow, price of hollow is $40. And price of solid is is but they don't they don't say eighty dollars what they say is the price of solid price of solid door is twice the price of price of hollow door they don't they tell us the price of hollow door is forty dollars and the solid door costs twice as much so it's eighty dollars 
But that's not what is given to us, that's something we, 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 we have uh, driven. We drive it out of that one. And that is what I meant by driven. It shouldn't have been driven, it should have been drive. That's, that's what we drive from there, not driven, sorry. Let's continue. They further tell us, they further told, tell us that the solid door, solid door is on sale. Is on sale 25% off. So even though the regular price is 80, the regular price is 80, we're not going to pay 80, we're actually going to pay, let's arrange this thing, we don't, we need the room. So the sale price, so the sale price of the solid door is 75% of 80. We know one quarter of 80 is 20, which is 25%. So the sale price is $60. That's what it is. It's very simple. Now we can figure out how much money we spend. The amount of money that we spend, let's call it D dollars, has to equal, obviously, has to equal the number of hollow doors that we purchase, which is 5, times the price of the hollow doors, which is 40, plus number of solid door that we purchase, which is 6 times the price of solid door, which regularly would have been $80, but because it's on sale, it's only $60. That's all. 5 times 40 is 200, and 6 times 60 is 360, so it's $560 is what we're going to spend buying these 11 doors. $560, and that would be answer choice C. Let's go on and let's do the very last one. Number 40. In number 40, in number 40 we're going to buy apples, crates of apples. And each crate contains only one kind of apple. I'm not going to write it. It says in the problem that when you buy a crate of apple, it only contains one kind. And there are three different kinds. So we're going to order the store orders. 25 crates of apples. There are three different kinds. Macintosh, Rome, and wine soap. Wine sap. I have no idea what that is, but that's what it is. There are three different kinds. Macintosh, Rome, and wine sap. What they are really doesn't matter to us. And the condition is that, based on, based on their experience, they know that they sell more of the wine sap than they do of Macintosh. So when they place the order, they're going to place all together 25 crates. That's, that's the order they're going to place, 25 carrots. Crates are there, 25 crates. But they, they want more of, of W than M. I'm going to stop calling their name. Similarly, they want more of W than R. The number of crates of uh, wine sap that, uh, that are going to be ordered has to be more than the number of ro Rome apples because they sell more of wine sap. The question simply is, the question simply is, what is the least possible, the least possible number of W ordered? Here are the answer choices A, B, C, D, and E. 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And as I told you last time, as I told you last time, when the answer choices are numeric, when the answer choices are all numeric, a lot of the time you can simply take one answer choice, put it back in the problem and, and, and work through it and, and get away with it without having to do the classical work, which is exactly what I like to do all the time. And it's always a good idea, it's always a good idea to start with the middle. Because it gives you some ideas to which way to go. You don't end up wasting time having to try out or five. So let's start from the middle. And as we start from the middle, you will see, well, well let's see. Let's see what happens. So here's the, here's the wine set, here's the Macintosh, here's the Rome. If you start from the middle, how many W's? This is the W. This number represents W, do you understand? So if you order 9 W, and because W has to be more than M, the least that we can order of M is 8, because it has to be whole crate. And since there is no, nothing in the book which says that they cannot, M and R cannot be equal, and because we want these guys to be as small as possible, you can order eight of that as well, just to see among the choices, just to see if it works. And when you add them up, it's exactly 25. There we go. And you will see that if you were to try 
8 or 9, it would not have worked. Even though 8 is smaller than 9 and 7 is smaller yet, it would not have worked. Because if you order 8 of the wine, W, if you order 8 of the W, the most we can order is M and R is 7. That's not going to add up to 25. Because W has to be more than M and W has to be more than R. It's not going to work. And obviously if 8 doesn't work, 7 is not going to work. And 10 is, is a little bit, little bit too much. We want, we want W to be least possible. The least among the five choices is 9. You understand? And of course the most you can have is 23 obviously. You can order 23 of those and one of that and one of that. But that will be the most situation. Because, because you have to, we are told that we are ordering all three of them. So we have to at least order one and at least order one of each. Because they have, and W has to be more than M. So we satisfy that condition. If we have, if we have 23, if we have 23 here and one here, we satisfy this condition. But that will be the highest number. The lowest number that we can order is 9. 8 does not work. 8 does not work. So that's it. The answer is C. The answer is C. That was the end of that page. That was the end of that page, page number 151. Tomorrow we meet and we're going to pick up from, question, from page number 152. Okay? Bye now.